Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In today's video tutorial for WordPress, we're going to be taking a look at the commercial add-on Revolution Slider. In particular, we're going to take a look at how we can add our first slider to our website and take a look at some of the basic settings we need to configure to get this working. We're going to use it alongside Visual Composer. If you haven't seen Visual Composer before, I'd recommend going and taking a look at some of my previous videos, the basics of Visual Composer, and many of the widgets have been explained in their own in-depth videos. So let's take a look at how we can use Revolution Slider within our website. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the left hand side and just choose Revolution Slider from the available options. And that will load up the Revolution Slider initial window. And what this is going to allow us to do, it will allow us to create new sliders, create templates or edit or update any sliders we previously created. So what we're going to do for this video is we're going to create new slider. And we're just going to take a look at some of the basic settings we need to configure to get this working. So the first thing we're going to do, and something we have to do, it's a mandatory field, is to give this slider a title. Now what I'd recommend is using titles that mean something to you. So for example, if you know this is going to go on the home page and only the home page, then you can title it home or home page, something that means something. And the same if you're doing ones for accommodation or contact and things like that, then you know make sure you just name it something that makes sense. So we're going to call this home page and we're going to give it an alias, which again, we're going to give it home page, but this time we're going to put underscore slider. And you can see that'll create the short code based upon what we've just put on there. Now we've got a range of other settings, which I'm not going to use today, but we will take a look at a lot of these in future videos when we go in more depth into using this particular add on. The sort of things we're going to take a look at on the right hand side is we're going to specify the appearance, and the first thing I'm going to do for this particular example is just turn off the shadow that's going to sit underneath it and specify I don't want any shadow. And you can see we've got options, things like navigation, which has a whole range of different options available to it. And on almost every setting you've got in here has a little help. So all you need to do is take your mouse over it and it'll give you a brief explanation of what these things do. Lots of them are self-explanatory, some are a little bit more in-depth and complicated. And like I say, we will take a look at a lot of these later on. So there's the beginning, we've just created our initial slider. Now this isn't the actual slides themselves. A slider can contain multiple different slides. Just consider this to be a sort of grouping of slides. So we've created or we've set and configured the basic information we need. So the next thing we're going to do now is actually go and create some of the slides that are going to go inside this slider. So the first thing I'm going to do is click create slider. So that will save all the settings we've just configured and we get a little message in the top right hand corner telling us that's saved and now that takes us back to the slider revolution uh, home page so you can see now we've got a range of options to us we've got the name of the slider that we're working with the short code the type that it is the number of slides we've got settings so if we want to go back in and configure or alter any of the settings we set up initially we can click on that and go back in there we can edit the slides which allows us to create new slides edit them, duplicate them and so on. We can export this so we may want to export it to another website or we may want to export it so we can load it back in at a future date. We can delete this out, we can clone it, we can take a duplicate or we can preview it. For this part of the video we're going to click on edit slides because we need to sort of start creating our new slides. And to add our first slide we just simply click the new slide option. What that's going to do is open up the Media Explorer so we can either upload a new file to use as the background image or we can select the file that we previously uploaded and that's what I've done so I'm just going to select this particular image insert that in and that'll create our first slide for us and allow us to go in and start editing that at this point we could easily edit the slide we could preview the slide we can delete the slide duplicate it or copy or move it so if we want to change the, the order when we've got multiple slides we can do that easily what we're going to do is we're going to edit this Now you can see we've got a whole range of options available to us in here. Most of these options you don't really need to set or configure. They are fine left as their default, but obviously if you want to get into more advanced animation and more advanced configuration of your slides, there's a whole array of different things that you can do from within this control panel. But we're going to keep it simple in this video. We're just going to simply go in and just make sure we've got a couple of the settings that I want to work with, make sure we're happy with those things. And you can see we've got things like transitions, we've got 
visible from until so we can specify dates that these slides are available we can publish we can make them unpublished we've got a massive array of different things we can do we can create additional layers we can animate those layers we can add additional images we can add text we can style that text the list is almost endless but for now we're going to leave it as it is and we're just going to say just to make sure update the slide and then we're going to go and create another slide we can do that easily by clicking add slide at the top here or if we go out of this and just go back to the slide list we could easily come back and we can just simply say well i want to either create a new slide in the same way as we did before but if we know all the settings are going to be the same we can just say duplicate and that allows us to quickly make a duplicate an identical copy of that particular slide we can go in and edit it and then we can change any of the parameters that we think are going to be different so for example in this particular slide we want to change the background image so all i'm going to do is click change image and choose a different background image insert that that will update and i will just simply come down and say update slide so we now have two slides created we can switch back and forth between those on this tab at the top and once we're finished we can just go back to the slide list alternatively we can just go straight to the page you want to start editing so i'm going to go and edit a page i previously created and we're going to add this new slider in and see what it looks like on the page okay so i'm on the page now that i want to add our slider in and like i said at the top of the video we're going to be using the visual composer and we're going to use that to lay out our pages now obviously you may not be using this but you'll generally tend to find that if you don't have the visual composer installed and the revolution slider ships with a particular theme that you're using you'll have a way of invoking that particular um, slider or that particular function within the page settings obviously it's beyond the scope of this video to cover all the different themes and the ways you can interact with it and you can set this up but for now we're just going to work with the visual composer so i can show you how easy it is to put a slider onto your page using this and then just tweak some parameters and things so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new row and you can see once we install the revolution slider it adds a new uh, option a new widget to our visual composer for revolution slider it's a very very simple widget we click on that and we've got three different things we can configure we can give it a widget title which again we're not going to going to use that we could select the slider so when you've got multiple sliders they'll be listed in there and you can set an extra class name if you want to call this up and, and change things by a CSS so we're just going to say well home page is the only option we have available to us we'll say save changes and then all i need to do is just bring this up because i want to put this at the top of the page so i can reorder that and then just simply update the page so now if we switch over to our page and just refresh that we should see now that we now have our first slider appearing at the top of the page and we can go through and we can change and jump between the different slides we have available to us using the arrows so that's how simple and easy it is to create your first slider, to add slides to it, to add it through Visual Composer, and to insert it on your page. In future videos, we're going to take a look at some of the more advanced features. We're going to start adding some animations in there. We'll start adding some additional layers and tweaking some of the settings. But for now, I hope this has given you a good introduction on how easy it is to add the Visual Composer, to add the... Um, revolution slider into your website using the visual composer if you found this video useful please hit the subscribe button below and the like button it really does help share the video comment on the video if you've got any tutorials you'd like to see in the future or any feedback please leave them in the comment section below and until next time take care